stop 31 of the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series brings us to Dearborn County and the fairgrounds. Welcome to Lawrenceburg as the best of the business come out here and continue their quest for a championship. The top three are going at it. The fight is on. Every track we visit here with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series has its own character, its own flavor. But for me, Lawrenceburg Speedway has a lot of special, special things. This is the very first dirt track that I ever visited. I was 12 years old, and yeah, that's a couple of weeks ago. Some might argue that I've never recovered. What great memories. Bert Swafford was on the PA. Ray Scheike was the flag man. So many things stand out in my mind. Now, the place has really changed. The old wooden grandstand is gone now, replaced by this beautiful modern aluminum structure. Even the track has changed. It was a little cool quarter mile back then, now it's a big fast 3.8. I love all the racetracks we go visit, but there's something very special about coming back to the bird. Tell them there's $10,000 on the line, they will come. This is the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, and you're watching the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. Ken Stout and Rob Clever are ready to call all the action for you. Of course, good friend Dave Argerbright, as we've already seen, is at the track, and Kelly Snyder will be helping him out down there on the grounds. We've got a racy place here. As you can see, this place is already starting to blue groove a little bit. It's great to be back here in Lawrenceburg, though. One year ago, we were dodging raindrops. Yeah, absolutely. A very fast racetrack last year, and tonight will be very fast as well, and the stands are packed. The only late model race that this track will see all season long. Here is your Magnaflow exhaust points coming into this event. As you can see Bloomquist with a sizable lead, but the battle for second has been steadily getting closer and closer. We'll find out how things lay out here this evening. All right, Lawrenceburg Speedway. Let's talk about it, Rob. Built back in 1950, and as Dave mentioned, it was a quarter mile to start, pretty much a bull ring, almost a complete circle, no real straightaways down, a 3 8 mile, about 15 degrees in the corner, banking, very fast racetrack, multiple grooves of racing as well. Well, Lawrenceburg Speedway is also unique in the fact that these drivers will have the chance to watch two different flagmen tonight. Earlier today, Kelly Snyder followed up on the story. Michael, you have a long history here at this track. How did you get involved in this? I really don't know, just wanted to do it one day and just start doing it. Made homemade flags and then I just started. I used to be in the pits and then I went to the back stretch and now I'm over here. Are the ladies attracted to your flagging skills? Yeah, a lot of them are. A big tradition and a big part of the Speedway is Michael McMillan right here. No, Rob, you cannot be a flag. <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, those guys make it look easy, but it sure is not. Michael does a good job here each and every week. He's definitely a big part of it. The fans love him as well. So it's great to have him out here. All right, let's show you some highlights from heat racing. Right off the bat, these guys got after it. Dale McDowell with 17M showing some early muscle here tonight. Four total heat races here tonight, 10 laps in distance, top four. We move on to the A-Main event. Dale McDowell was your fastest qualifier, picked up his second Red Buck Cigars Fast Time Award in 2010. Some big names inside of this first heat race here, including Ray Cook, also Scott James back in the pile. So the guys scrapping, trying to get up to the front, only 10 laps to get it done. When the checkered flag flew, it was Dale McDowell who led him across the stripe. Zach Dom was second, followed by Brandon Kinzer and Jimmy Owens. Here's a look, courtesy of E3. Dale McDowell, you got the night going on a, a good note. Fast qualifier winning your heat race. Is this the kind of thing you're looking for to keep going? Well, it is definitely. Uh, the racetrack is a little dirty out there right now, so I, I think everybody's having a problem you know, actually distinguish, distinguishing where to run. So I'm gonna go up here and watch some of these heats. Feature's gonna be a long 50 laps, so because racetrack's gonna be really racy. You're gonna have some slick spots in it, but heck, we got the best start, best start spot in the field, so we're gonna try to take advantage of it. Did he just say that dirt track was dirty? That's what he said. Okay. He's right, he's right. He's right too. <laughs> All right, heat race number two. Again, some big names. Earl Pearson Jr., Dan Sleeper, and this one, Eddie Carrier Jr., Brad Neat, John Blankenship, Mike Marler also in this heat race, and it was quite a battle. Yeah, Tyler Reddick, the young kid from California, kind of checking out on the field, but a three-car battle for second and third. There is Carrier in the 28. Earl Pearson Jr. going top shelf on Dan Schlieper. 
How about that? Yeah, that is just the opposite of what they typically do. But how about this young kid, Tyler Reddick, leading some of the absolute best of all time? Yeah, coming off turn four, Earl Pearson Jr. would try and make a run at Tyler Reddick, and Reddick would hold him off, pick up his first heat race win this season, and find his seat in tonight's A main. Earl Pearson Jr. would finish second, Dan Schliefer third, and Eddie Carrier Jr. rounded out your top four. Tyler Reddick, your first win this season for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. What about this track is so fast for you? Well, it just depends on getting that. I mean, you got to have everything right. You got to get your good hot lap. Once you get good in the hot laps, you, you'll set you up for time trials, and that'll set you up in your heat race, and that's what just all fell into place tonight. All right, let's go to heat race number three. More time, 10 laps, top four, trying to get in here. Berkey, the defending race champion inside of this particular heat. Yeah, another star-studded affair. You see Eric Wells chasing Rookie of the Year honors. There is Berkey in the 15, trying to get by Chris Wall, the intimidator out of Holden, Louisiana. It would be trouble, though, for Wall. He would come to a stop, currently leading Rookie of the Year points this year. Justin Ratliff, Lane Chen inside this one as well. And again, we see race from the top shelf and the bottom shelf. Eisenberg comes across the stripe first. Tim Eisenberg, winner of heat race number three. Now, being a young rookie out here with these guys, it's a big learning curve. Nights like this when you run well, how much does it help your confidence? Oh, it helps your confidence a ton to run good like this. Uh, you know, but uh, we're expecting ourselves to run good sometimes. I mean, I got a lot of help from Jimmy and Chris Mars, and, you know, Jimmy's won a lot of these races. So, uh, you know, we're just getting a chance to show it finally. We were starting to wonder with Tyler Reddick and Tim Eisenberg winning their heat races if that trend would continue. But Don O'Neill, Scott Blumquist, Steve Casebolt, Matt Miller, talk about the who's who all in this one. Yeah, you see Casebolt there in the C9, Matt Miller in the 7, working that low part of the racetrack. Shane Clanton almost looping it out there in turn number four. The 08 World 100 winner would lose a couple spots there. But again, a great racetrack here, multi group. And there's a look at the 71 car and the real deal. Don O'Neill first across the stripe and heat race number four. It was his 12th heat race win of the season, followed by Scott Blumquist, of course, our points leader, then Steve Casebolt and Matt Miller rounded out the top four. Don O'Neill, we're here in your home state. All of the fans out there are yelling for you. Does that put pressure on you, or does it make you feel more at home? No, actually, it's really nice just to be at home, you know. We get to go back and sleep in our own bed tonight. So it's it's really nice, you know, to have all the fans out tonight. I really enjoy being here. You had a great run in Batesville. Coming into tonight, are you looking to take home that win? Well, I don't know about a great run in Batesville. We did to about halfway, and then we wound up like 18th or something. So, but, you know, hopefully we can rebound tonight. Well, Don O'Neill looking for some more points in the ApplianceZone.com sponsorship contest and looking for a win here tonight. Well, another guy that's in the hunt for a win is Dale McDowell, and Dave Argerbright is down with him. And Dave, you know, a real solid competitor here out of this particular individual, but he has been searching hard for that first Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series win. Will tonight be the magic? Dale McDowell is in the midst of another strong year here with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, but they've kept him out of victory lane. He's been on the podium several times, but needs to get that first win. He's still looking for it. He's in a great starting spot tonight. Dale, you're on the pole. You've talked in recent weeks about your program really coming together. What do you need to do here tonight to close the deal and get in victory lane? Well, obviously, um, it's a tire gamble a little bit. I think some, back, some guys are back through there on uh, on different tire compounds, and they water the top of the racetrack. So when they water the top of the racetrack there, the top groove, I don't know, we, we won't know what it's done, but, you know, to that groove until we get going here. So maybe things will go our way. Uh, you know, we're in a good spot, so I can't complain about the spot, and and uh, maybe we can capitalize on it and then and step front on it. Dale McDowell, indeed, going to be one of the cars to watch. And now let's hear from my colleague in the pit area tonight, Kelly Snyder. The number 11 T of Tyler Reddick may be a 14-year-old high school freshman, but this student has definitely learned that consistency is the key in this series. Tyler's made several A mains in this series this year and had his first win here tonight. Tyler, you have a great starting position on the inside of row number two. What what are you going to do to hold off these guys that are going to be coming for you up in the front? Well, I'm just going to last till the end of this race. Uh, we're just going to see what we can do. We got hard tires on, so we'll be there at the end, but all it counts is just staying up here and waiting for to be in... Um, be in range for the end of the race so it just all depends on that Tyler you told me earlier you're just looking for a top five finish here tonight but what would it mean to you to win it would be huge to win um, my family's here um, my grandparents and uh, my great uncle and aunt and um, you no know, it'd be great to win here tonight I got a lot of family here but I mean 
Uh, top five would also be huge. Um, the best we've done so far is ninth, but I'm looking we can get five. Tyler Reddick may be the youngest guy out here on this track, but he definitely has a big task ahead of him. Guys? Well, there is no question that young man has the talent to end up in the top five, and he will get his fair share of them and win throughout his career. You're watching the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. When we come back, we'll highlight the B-Mains for you and show you how we filled out the back part of this field. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. This telecast is brought to you by Rockstar Energy Drink. Party like a rock star. K&M, the world's best air filter. And by E3 Spark Plugs with Diamond Fire Technology. Welcome back to Lawrenceburg Speedway. This is the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. And the house has been pretty packed here all night long. As people start to climb back up into the stands, we're going to bring you highlights of the B main. The B main for 12 laps long. It's the top three advance. Yeah, you had to fight your way to the front. Only the top three, and it's always tight in these B main events with this series. You can see not a lot of change on the track for the B mains as Ray Cook in that 53 started third, using that low line, trying to get underneath Dustin Eaton the 25. Got a great battle going on with those guys here, and I'll tell you, man, the precision driver once again just literally inches off the nose of each other, using everything they can get. It was a neat front row with Dustin Eaton on the pole. Brad Neat started outside of row number one. There is Dustin putting a slider on John Blankenship. Blankenship in the flat number 23 started in the fourth spot. They would continue to battle on turn four as they took the checker. Blankenship trying to get underneath eventual second place finisher Ray Cook. But Dustin Neat there in the 25 would not make the main. Brad Neat, Wood, Ray Cook, and Blankenship round out your top three. Brad Neat, winner of B -name, B main number one. And you know, the good news is you're in the show. What's this racetrack going to be like? Well, it actually might be pretty racy. I don't know about right now. There's a lot of trash out there, but uh, it may be pretty racy in that A main. Do you have a lot to do to your race car to make it better? Yeah, we're going to have to get better. We're just kind of mediocre right now. It felt pretty good out there right then, but. You know, we were in open air, so um, we're probably going to have to get better so we can run through traffic. Brad Neat getting ready to get busy on that Red Buck race car. Excellent job for him, winner there of that B main number one. This is B main number two to fill out the field. Another stacked affair here in B main number two. Wayne Chin started inside row three. Chris Wall and Shane Clanton. Two big names in dirt late model racing made up row number three, and they would race their way to the front. You see Chris Wall there, who had trouble in his heat race, working underneath the sniper, Wayne Chin, in the red 15. Yeah, Wayne Chin with a lot of smoke out of the back of that one as well. Looked like he was struggling with some mechanical issues, although the performance didn't fall off right away. Hung on for a little bit, and then eventually the 15 car would pull off the track. Oh, and then Domino's effect, and yeah, we wanted some up right there. Yeah, you can see Joe Janowski there in the blue and black 6J. Kind of a victim of circumstance. Had to turn right to dodge a car and took out a couple other cars, so unfortunate. But the race up front would be exciting. Chris Wall kind of checking out again, starting inside row three. Shane Clanton and Justin Ratliff going at it for a top three spot. Checkered flag came out, and the Intimidator. The best nickname in all of their late model racing. Picked up his third B-Main win of the year. Shane Clanton and Justin Ratliff, the Rattler, would move on. Courtesy of E3 Spark Plug, the top three go to the show. Chris Wall, you raced your way up through that B-Main to the first place position. How are you going to do that coming into the A-Main, working even more? The track's polished off. Looks like it's got a high groove and a low groove. Uh, just seemed like we've been snake bit the last four or five weeks. Had a pretty good car in the heat race and blew a tire and it put us back in the B-Main. So. We did what we had to do right there, and uh, we just got to you know, hit the ground running here in this feature. For the ApplianceZone.com sponsorship, what, what do you think it's going to take for you to gain the fan support and those points coming into tonight? Well, we, we've, uh, the fans have supported us excellent. Right now, we're leading the fan vote, and uh, you know, right now, we just need to get out here and win some race or get some top fives and do good on the performance end, and I think we'll have a good chance at that 70,000. So vote 71, yeah. Well, Chris Wall, looking for the fan support and those points tonight coming into the main event. He's always had a great fan following. In fact, at his home track, there's actually an Intimigator section there. So it's pretty cool to watch him come out and support Chris Wall. 
Well, we heard from our pole sitter. Let's go down to Dave Augerbright, who's now with the outside pole. Thanks, Ken. One of the challenges for any young racer here with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series is you're going against some tough competition night in and night out. It's a big learning experience. The student who's really done his homework this week is Tim Eisenberg, who's earned a front row starting spot. Tim, you got a prime starting spot here. What do you need to do now to get out front? Well, you know, we just want to get through the first few laps clean, being a rookie in front of this whole field. But uh, tire selection is huge in this Lucas Oil deal, and uh, we're just hoping we got the right shoes on tonight. Indeed, Tim Eisenberg. Great starting spot, see if he can close the deal. Now let's hear from Kelly again, who's with last year's winner. That's right, Dave. The number 15B of Brian Burkhofer took home the win last year at Lawrenceburg Speedway. He's back here again on the outside of row number five. Brian, you haven't had the best of luck this season, but coming into this racetrack, you've proven yourself as a successful driver here. Does that give you that extra boost of confidence? Well, I mean, we won last year, and we kind of maybe outtired a little bit, so everybody learned from last year here, obviously. Um, we're starting 10th. It was a, we weren't in a B main. That was that was a step in the, uh, the right direction for this year. But uh, I think we got a good car. We worked on some stuff, and we'll just see after 50 laps. I mean, it's a heck of a racetrack, and there's uh, some more tire strategy going on again tonight. So we'll see what happens. Don't ever count that guy out. He is tough, tough in that MB Customs chassis. So our field is set here for the A main. Take a look at those eyes for Tim Eisenberg as he straps that helmet on and is ready to take a crack. And who knows, maybe he picks up his first win here tonight as well. Of course, Dale McDowell would love to stop that. Maybe Tyler Reddick, that young man, can do what it takes to get out here and beat this incredibly tough field. It all remains to be seen. We've got a lot of racing yet to go with 50 laps, $10,000 on the line. Well, it looks like Earl Pearson Jr., four-time Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series champion pulling in the pits, possibly gonna make a tire change. These guys can do this. They can come into the pits prior to taking the green flag, and they get their original starting spot back. As you can see, the parade lap here, they go four wide. Yeah, there's some strategy in there as well. You don't really want people to know what tire you've chosen. Maybe you want to take a look at the track up to the very last minute. There's some, uh, there's some real strategy that plays out here in this series. You can see crew chief Jason Fitzgerald there in the black shirt going to work. Looks like a left rear tire change only on the number 44 for EPJ is most beautiful sight in all the motorsports, the four-wide salute. A lot of fans here tonight. And again, we mentioned the only dirt late model race here at Lawrenceburg Speedway this season. So if you're a dirt late model fan, you need to be here tonight. You know, it looked like Dale McDowell was already rubbing up against Tim Eisenberg here on the break lap. <laughs> Bell, straighten them back out. Line them up two by two. We're going to get things started when we come back. It looks like Earl Pearson Jr. has the tire change. The A main is next. Welcome back to the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals here at Lawrenceburg Speedway in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Earl Pearson Jr. sitting out there waiting to fall into place. He is okay. Just changed that left rear tire as we saw before. Everybody getting gathered back up here. Rob, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's very hot and very humid here in the state of Indiana. On record, the driest August in the history of the state. And it's tough to make a tacky fast racetrack. It's going to be slick and smooth. Dale McDowell and Tim Eisenberg on the front row, courtesy of your K&N lineup, followed by Tyler Reddick and Don O'Neill. Row number three, Zach Dom on the inside, and Rookie of the Year contender, Eric Wells. Row four, EPJ, the four-time champion, alongside your current point leader, Scott Bloomquist. Let's go back to row five. We find Brandon Kenzer and Brian Burkhofer, your defending race champion. In row six, it'll be the wild man, Dan Schlieper and Steve Casebolt. One guy you never want to count out, Jimmy Owens inside of row number seven alongside Victor Lee in the 88. In row eight, it's Eddie Carrier Jr. on the inside and the always tough Matt Miller behind the wheel of the seven. Let's go back to row number nine, the guys that got in uh, from the B main, Brad Neat and Chris Wall. Then we find Ray Cook and Shane Clinton in row 10. Inside of row number 11, former series rookie of the year, John Blankenship and also Justin Ratliff in the 16 and your 12th and final row, Mike Marler in the 18X and the hometown boy from right here in Lawrenceburg, Scott James. The field is set. The stands are packed. The check has been written. We just need to know who to give it to. 39 cars show up today in the pits. It will be 24 to take the green flag here at the Burr. Dale McDowell leads them around, stands on the throttle. We are racing at the Rockstar Energy Drink, Late Model National. 
Eisenberg down to the bottom, right off the bat as he follows McDale. And here comes Don O'Neill, man. They throw the green flag, I guarantee you that guy's ready to go. Well, Don O'Neill loves to run the top shelf. He went down in turns one and two, a little bit more of a cushion to lean on in turns one and two. Not so much at three and four, but he's gonna try. That thing's gonna move out closer and closer to the wall. These guys are gonna be banging off of it here for 50 laps. Oh, man, a bit of a mistake right there. But McDowell washed up, slid right up in front of him, kind of took away some momentum. As you can see, it's a bit rough out there this evening. Well, Don O'Neill picked up a win at East Bay Raceway Park. It's been a long time since we were in Tampa, Florida. As we go back to Tyler Reddick there in the 11, you see Eisenberg on the top shelf in the 9T, the white car, and Earl Piercy Jr. right there as well. Made that left rear tire change, and so far, so good for the 44. Boy, Eric Wells and Earl Pearson Jr. could not have gotten any closer and not touched on board courtesy of Lucas Oil with Earl Pearson Jr. looking back at Wells. So again, the battle for that third spot, a five-car battle, if you will, Tyler Reddick. See if he'll be able to hold off for Earl Pearson Jr., the kid from Corning, California, now residing in the state of Kentucky. So he will give up third, moves back to fourth, and EPJ making some moves. He started inside of row four and seven already in the third spot. This is pretty much what we were expecting here tonight. The racers thought they'd have a top shelf and a bottom shelf, and looks like maybe even there's a little something right through the middle there because Zach just hung on to it pretty good. Well, we talked about, you know, no rain, pretty much no rain here in the month of August in the state of Indiana. Orangeburg didn't get any as well, so. Very tough to keep a track nice and tacky with, you know, putting a hundred million dollars of water on it. But it's very racy, that's what the fans come to see. He's got Luke was working his way up in there, right down on the bottom. Burkhoff for finding some grip as we go nearly four wide right there. <laughs> Woo, we are racing. Zach Dom right through the middle of the racetrack. We call that no man's land is Tim Eisenberg around the top shelf in the 9T. Eric Wells down there. Berkey, here comes the zero of Scott Bloomquist right through the middle of the racetrack as well. Look at this. Wow. Berkey find up just a little bit of grip right down there on the bottom. And it looks like Bloomquist was going to follow him for a moment. Decide to slide back up a little higher and slow the field down. The caution flag comes out. Scott James with some troubles. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot from the Silver Shark here in 2010, but of course, when you come to his hometown, he's going to show up, and good to see him here. Unfortunately, he had some bad luck in this race last year, and a little bit of bad luck right now as well. We'll see a tire down or anything of the sort. We'll see if he pulls off the track. Strange situation there, but he did pull up to the top and slow down, and again, part of the strategy here with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. We've got a long ways to go. Just got warmed up. Here's your general tire top five. We're all chasing Dale McDowell. Can he hang on? Scott James rolling out of the pits there with the 44 car that you're watching the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. And the pits and back out. And Scott brought the caution flag out that we are under right now. Look at your points leader right there. Has had an incredible season. Yeah, Scott Bloomquist has been pretty much unstoppable. A huge point lead over Jimmy Owens, 170 points. Pretty much those three guys, Jimmy Owens, second, Earl Pearson Jr., of course, third in the points, 21 wins between the top three drivers. You know, you know, and a year ago, it was just the opposite. I mean, it really wasn't that way. Owens certainly getting his fair share, but Scott Bloomquist, to this point in the season, had yet to win one a year ago. Dow with a great restart right there. Really just drives away from the field. O'Neill will follow him. Earl Pearson Jr. down to the bottom. He likes it down there. Eric, Not yeah, Eric. right on the bottom. Though. Yeah, no, he's kind of running a little bit about a half a trip off the bottom. There is a little bit of moisture there right on the bottom coming off turn four as well as entering turn one. You can see very slick off turn two as well as entering turn number three. So that's going to that's gonna change throughout this race. 50 laps here can go in a hurry. These guys are going to have to search around this race. It's got to be difficult down there. We saw Burkhofer doing a pretty good job down there. And there's a look at the 15 car and Brian Burkhofer. But it seems as though Earl Pearson Jr. can't get his car to work on the bottom. 
and nobody runs the bottom any better than EPJ, so kind of surprising as we watch Berkey now go to the top. And there's no adjustments behind the wheel of these race cars, folks. When you get out on the track, that's pretty much what you have. You can't jack any weight. You have no adjustable shocks. You don't even have a rear view mirror. You don't have a spotter. So when you're out there, what you have is what you have. Oh, case full right up beside the 20 car. Jimmy Owens, and still right there. Great well, battle through that turn. Yeah, Jimmy Owens making some moves here early. Started back in the 13th spot. Likes to keep that zero. Team Bloomquist car behind him as they chase the title. I'll tell you, for the hardcore fans out there, maybe even the, the general fans that like mechanical stuff, keep an eye on that left rear tire because that rear end moves a lot. What it's designed to do, you watch that left rear right there. You can see it on the 18 car. It just sucks right up underneath that left corner, that front panel there. It moves a ton. And there is Tyler Reddick running right through the middle of the racetrack. The 11 oh. car case bolt up over the cushion. And you got to be careful. You live and die by running that top shelf. And case bolt, nice job there not to get bit. The masters of dirt racing are going at it here with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Your general tire, top five. A great battle going on here. Rockstar Energy Drink and Late Model Nationals. Dave Argerbright, and again, Case Bolt up and over the cushion. Dave Argerbright, Kelly Snyder down there in the pits. Ken Snell, Rob Tucker calling the action for you up here. And Case Bolt's just, he's going right back up there. And when you run that cushion, especially down in turn one, a nice little ledge there, and that was perfect. That's how you get around it. You got to get that car set. You got to keep your foot down to keep those wheels spinning. A nice little slider. They'll slide up over the cushion in turn four, but if you can't keep that right rear spinning, you're going to push, you're going to jump over the cushion, and sometimes you'll end up in the pits. Yeah, when he gets a run off of that cushion, man, he rocket ships down the straightaway. Great onboard shot there, courtesy of P3 Spark Plugs. Steve Casebolt there in the C9, again, up on top, currently eighth in points. Finished 23rd last year here at the Berg. And coming off a good top 10 finish, finished 10th at the top of 100 last Saturday night as we go back up front with Dale McDowell. Dale McDowell up there playing with that cushion as well. Those guys will knock that big lip off there if they keep running up over the top of it. Won't be quite so bad. John O'Neill still hanging on the back bumper there of Dale McDowell as we watch Earl Pearson Jr., who's still on the top. And now he knows what it feels like whenever somebody's <laughs> at the bottom driving underneath yeah, him, because that's yeah. what he does to everybody else. Well, Brian Burkhofer, you know, last year, Jeep Van Warmer looked like he was going to pick up his first series win, and Berkey used that low line and ran him down. And right now, two of the best going at it. Two guys that like to run the low part of the racetrack, they're trying to get down there. And EBJ said, that ain't going to happen, man. I'm going to get down here and go underneath you. That's the way it's supposed to go down. Yeah, if possible, if you can get underneath Earl Pearson Jr., you got photographers jumping out of the way because they set that car up to run the low line. Jason Fitzgerald, the whole team, does a great job, and there's no one better than EPJ down low. Well, I don't know, man. Brookie looks a little better there tonight. EPJ might want to try the top one more time. Stay with us. We're making some dust here. Your leader is Dale McDowell, followed by Don O'Neill. You're watching the Rockstar Energy Drink, late model national. Dale McDowell looking for his first win here at Lawrenceburg. Neil up on the cushion as well. And you know, race car drivers, they show up with a nice helmet bag. They got their helmet, their gloves, their suit, or sometimes they have their suit. One driver tonight did not bring his suit, Kelly Snyder. Well, guys, you may think the number 20 car has Jimmy Owens driving it, but based on what his driving suit says this weekend, it is Ricky Bobby behind that driving wheel. He had to borrow Bradney's driving suit, so he covered it up. It says Ricky Bobby in there, and if we all know Ricky Bobby, we know that if you ain't first, you're last. So Jimmy Owens is definitely going to try to get to that first place spot here tonight. Well, Kelly, he's certainly making some moves right behind him. You see the 18 of Eric Wells from Hazard, Kentucky, finished ninth at the top of 100 last Saturday night. Wells having a pretty good year, currently 10th of the points, and he's chasing Chris Wall, the chase for the Rookie of the Year title. Here we go, back for eighth spot. Shane Clanton in the 25 has made some moves as he started back in 20. Steve Casebolt, man, he is racing hard out here tonight. Casebolt from nearby Richmond, Indiana, just north of here. 
and he's got a hometown crowd here as well, and he likes the top part of the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, he looks good right there. Doing his best to bring that thing to his to his favor, and Scott Wolfquist takes a quick look at it as he goes back down towards the bottom, but right now, Keystone making the top work for him, and he's paid the price to do that. Past the halfway mark here. Paying in picker up there at the top, find your favorite driver. And Steve Casebolt is driving away from Bloomquist. Well, Casebolt could have went with the harder tire. And the good thing about having that harder tire when you're on the top shelf is that left rear is always in the slick. It's going to keep it nice and heated. And with these long green flag runs, it could pay off in his favor. Brian Burkhoff, of course, has said it a couple times. Won this one a year ago, and now is starting to climb back up on the back bumper of Don O'Neill. O'Neill right behind McDowell. So Burkhoff are now making a run for the front of this pack, and Burkhoff is starting back on the outside of row number five. Yellow lights coming on as it looked like O'Neill was going to have to worry about Berkey shooting to the inside as Del McDowell again continues the lead, has led every single lap here tonight. But the caution flag is out one more time, and it looks like it's for that man, Chris Wall, the Intimidator, car number 71W, current Rookie of the Year points leader. Right behind him is Dan Schieber, also coming into the pits. We'll figure out what these guys are looking to do here in the tire tank or chassis adjustment. On board with Chris Wall. Great overhead shot here of the racetrack. You can see it's definitely slicked off in a few different areas and sometimes the tires will actually seal over when they get a chance to cool off like this but hot as it is out here I'm not sure if they'll even cool off and yeah it looks like a little suspension change here yeah it looks like a little work on the track bar there on the right rear trying to possibly hook up the 71w and would have thought they might have made a tire change but it doesn't look like they're going to do that so chris ball will head back out onto the racetrack or will he now he stops might have stalled that thing somehow your general tire top five has Dale McDowell at the top as they push off Chris Wall. Back here at the Rockstar Energy Train with the late model Nationals. And we saw Chris Wall take off to get back in the race, but unfortunately something happened. He stopped and the guys got back underneath the right front this time and now making his way back out in the field. So Chris may be deciding to make another chassis change on the front end to help get some Weight transfer to the left rear, gets a drive off the corners. You can see a nice slick racetrack here, but don't let that fool you. It's been very racy. Three, four wide racing all night long, and Dell McDowell has certainly been the class of the field. We'll bring him around here one more time with the Delaware style, double file, three star. Ooh! Very close right there. Owens oh, really taking a look at O'Neill. And again with another great start here. For McDowell, but Burkhofer gets around O'Neill. He was leaning on him before the caution flag. Now picks up the position right away. Started 10th, takes over second from the real deal, Don O'Neill. And O'Neill trying to get a nice slider. That's how you get it done here at Lawrenceburg as Berkey bounce off the cushion. Here comes Earl Pearson Jr. and Jimmy Owens, who started deep in the field of 13. Oh, these guys are going at it. Three wide here through turns three and four. O'Neill back up to the top. Burkhofer through the middle. About 16 laps left to go, and these guys continue to go side by side. It might allow Dale McDowell to just check out. And Don O'Neill, wow, oh. into the fence. O'Neill jumps the cushion. Oh, almost down there into Owens. Owens, a great job staying out of that wreck. Well, let's take a look at that one more time, because Don O'Neill, folks, one of the best in the dirt late model, gets up into the cushion, will go on board. Hold on. Comes back down onto the track and sideways once again right in front of Owens. So he's back on it. There is Shane Clanton in the 25, Eric Wells in the 18, Eisenberg in the white 19. But back up front as McDowell continues to lead about half a straightaway advantage over Brian Burkhofer, who's going to feel some more pressure again from Earl Pearson Jr. And right there, you can see Berkey sliding up a little bit, so maybe his car getting a little bit tight coming off the corner. Earl Pearson Jr. now in third place. Jimmy Owens in fourth. Keep in mind, those guys are in a hot battle in the points here. And, of course, EPJ trying to close the gap on Owens to take over second in the points. And so his goals on Blumquist, who's a little deeper in the pack. Jimmy Blumquist finally struggling here out of the top five. 
Cohen there in the 20 has won eight leading all drivers this year for Lucas Oil Lake on the third series. He won the Icebreaker. He won the Diamond Nationals. Most recently, the North-South 100 finished second last Saturday night at the topless 100. Passed 21 cars in 100 laps. This guy's getting it done here this season. He is a tough competitor to say the least. And still can't catch Bloomquist. <laughs> yeah. Man, Mr. Consistent, Scott Bloomquist, 21 top fives, 26 top tens. That's how you win titles. Tonight, he is not in the top five for the first time in a while. He's been so consistent, as you talked about. 44 cars still in the hunt, but everybody's still chasing the 17M. Dale McDowell looking for his first win of the 2010 season. Can he hang on? He's looking strong right now. Your general tire, top five, is as follows. Final lap for the Rockstar Energy Drink. The late Metal Nationals here at Lawrenceburg Speedway. Stop number 31 on the tour here in 2010. The guys are pretty racy back behind it. Shane Payne there with a 25 car. Eisenberg with a nine car. Started on the outside pole. Unfortunately for him, has fallen back just a bit. Yeah, we mentioned Scott Bloomquist there up on the top shelf running in ninth. Right now off turn four. Clanton passed a lot of cars so far here tonight after starting 20th. Bloomquist right up there on that cushion. Trying to get around Kemp. Battle for eighth place as it sits right now. Just ahead of them is Eric Wells. Of course, we've seen Shane Clinton. We'll talk about him. First time we've seen Shane this year. Former World 100 winner. As that's coming up in a few months. Back up front, Dale McDowell. Looking for his first Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series win here in 2010. Safe to say he had his Cheerios this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Clint Hoyer, he's been driving for him for a handful of years. And uh, Tommy Greco, Caleb Baker, they've really done a great job with that 17M. They've kind of been stink bit this year. They've been very fast, just not a lot of racing left. Brian Burkhoff is still down there on the bottom, making it work. And I'm telling you, he's coming right now. Berkey is slowly picking away at this deal. And Owens is coming along with him. Five to go. Five to go. Dale McDowell, hang on here. And Dale McDowell trying to get up to that cushion, unable to do it. Here comes Brian Burkhofer. Nice run off turn two down the back straightaway. McDowell has led every single lap. This is where Berkey's good, right here. Coming off three and four, he gets a little bit of bite off the bottom down there. And again, he'll try that low line off turn two. McDowell glued to the top shelf. The Osho up on the cushion as well. Berkey loses a little bit there off of one and two. McDowell might not have a spotter, but I promise you he knows he's there. Zach Dom in the 17 car goes one lap down, and that's going to help Dell McDowell to have that one car in between him and Berkey. If it even lasts, because Burkhoff is still coming. White flag is out for Dale McDowell. I'm going to tell you, man, I don't think he's got enough to catch him. Dale McDowell has been solid. He's gotten close, but not enough to get around him. Dale McDowell through turns three and four one final time. $10,000 on the line, and Dale McDowell will pick up his first win of the 2010 season. Leads all 50 laps here at Lawrenceburg Speedway, and a great win for Dale McDowell. We said he's been struggling here in 2010, been very fast, just not getting the results that they want. He picks up a big one here, $10,000 for that number 17 and good stuff. Here's a look at the unofficial results, courtesy of E3 Spark Plugs, Dale McDowell, and of course the General Dollar and Cheerios back machine, owned by Clint Boyer, leads the group. A tough night for the California kid. Tyler Reddick started third, ends up 14th here at Lawrenceburg. Some pretty talented drivers there at the bottom of the pack as well, and Mike Marler, Matt Miller, and Scott James. Tough night for them, but the fans were treated to an excellent show out here tonight. They packed the house at the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. Yeah, now they're all going to head pit side, get some autographs, buy some T-shirts, and go high-five Dave Rudisell, the promoter here at Lawrenceburg, another fantastic Dirt Late Model event. When we come back, we'll talk to our winner, Dale McDowell. The Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series has been brought to you by Geico Power Sports, insurance for all things that move you. Canada, all natural pet food. And by Lucas Oil Products.
made in America, sold to the world. Welcome back to Lawrenceburg Speedway. As we take a look at Dale McDowell, our winner of the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. It's been a long time coming here in 2010 for this whole team as McDowell climbs out of the 17M. Yeah, I think he did eat his Cheerios earlier this morning. <laughs> Congrats to him. Let's get it down today. Boy, there for a minute, I thought you were going to fall down. I I'll tell you what, you had to be on pins and needles, Dale, when the 15 showed himself with just a handful of laps to go. What went through your mind? Well, at the beginning of the race, they went to the top of the racetrack, and I started on the inside. So thought that the outside was going to be dominant. And uh, so when I got clear, I think I got clear. But anyway, I went to the top, and uh, and then we were a little soft on, on left side tires. And I think those guys probably were a little harder on tires than we were. And then uh, so... The caution helped me. I was able to stretch out just a little bit, but you know, it was it's a good win for Cheerios and Dollar General and ECR and everybody at Clint Boy Racing and uh, uh, just so many people that I need to thank and and uh, uh, Ditchfield Trucking and and uh, who all I need to thank. Coach You're cheating everybody. looking at those decals. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've been in Victory Lane, Dave. It's <laughs> it's been a while, but everybody stuck hard and worked together, stuck together well, and and uh, it's good night for us. You know, I know you've been frustrated, but you've been very patient, and, and you haven't complained about much, just kept plugging. This has to mean a great deal to you to be here right now. Yeah, most certainly. You know, it's, it's uh, we had a strong year last year and thought we could fill in our weak areas, and then this year, we just haven't had the combination put together. We made a few changes, and, uh, you know, and, and my hat's off to everybody at ECR. Man, those guys, they finally got us an engine weak enough <laughs> where they just had too much horsepower, and and so we kept toning it down, toning it down, toning it down. They've got a real drivable piece now. And, and uh, so, I mean, everything worked out for us. Great tonight. Uh, congratulations on a great run. Let's go to Kelly. Ryan, what an exciting race you had out there. Last year you won here. You just, what was it that you couldn't get past that number 17? Well, I got, I got beside him there, and I think I, I made him drive hard for a couple laps. And the problem was is I was actually overdriving my car. And the way the season's been, I've been kind of having to have a whole lot of confidence in my stuff. And then after the checkered, no offense to Dale, if I'd have moved up a car like the one and two, I think I, I could have got by him, but I had harder tires on, so we kind of had him on that. But congratulations to Dale. I mean, them guys have needed a win. Uh, his crew guys, and you know, are great guys, and I'm uh, glad to see him get a win. And I'm glad, glad to get some confidence back in my stuff here. That's that's for sure. I've always ran. I guess I've ran here good a couple times, so it's a fun place. Well, congratulations, and that was a great second place finish. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. For being here. Great job there to Mr. Burkhofer. There's the beautiful Rockstar Energy Drink girls and a look at that trophy that Dale McDowell just earned. Well, Dave Augerbright is down with Jimmy Owens, a.k.a. Ricky Bobby. Does he still have his fire suit on? You know, I tell you what, this has been your good luck night. Ricky Bobby, I, I want you to see this guy. He's usually wearing black and green and all mm -hmm. that. What happened? You didn't bring the uniform? Well, I um, got Nathan, my little boy, and uh, headed to the racetrack and forgot all about my fire suits and things. So. You know, we got to the track, had to borrow Brad Neat's fire suit, and, uh, you know, thank God he had a spare. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> you ran well enough. I think you might try to hang on to that thing for a while. You had a really good night here, and, and point-wise, it helped you again. It, it was a great night for points, and, uh, you know, to come in third from wherever we started is, uh, you know, it's just pretty cool. I mean, we had a great car. That last caution kind of killed us. I think we sold our tires a little bit, and it took us about five laps to get going, but we were rolling pretty good. But... You know, um, I, I was pleased with the performance tonight. Ricky Bobby would be proud, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you ain't first or last. <laughs> no, good news, he still has that fire suit on, not running around in his underwear. So that's, that's a plus for all of us. I thought he'd be going in for a nice sloppy kiss with Argerbright there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look at the points here. Courtesy of Magnaflow Exhaust, Scott Bloomquist on top still. Jimmy Owens, 140 back. It's going to be a long season for these guys. Trying to chase Bloomquist down. Here's your Rockstar Energy Drink. Race recap right off the bat, man. Dale McDowell got a great start of 71 of Don O'Neill. Then Berkey stuck his nose up there. EPJ in there. Owens back behind him. They were three and four wide at one point. Yeah, battles for second, battles for third, battles throughout this entire event. Earl Pearson Jr. making some moves. We documented Jimmy Owens starting deep, working his way to the front. Then at the end, here comes the 15B of Berkey. Brian Burkhofer trying to get by the winner. Couldn't do it. And Dale McDowell leads all 50 laps, picks up his first win of the year. Congrats to Dale McDowell. It's an awesome race here at Lawrenceburg Speedway, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. This telecast has been produced.
by Lucas Oil Studios in association with Speed. $10,000 to the winner and a beautiful picture with a beautiful Rockstar Energy Girl. For Kelly Snyder and Dave Argerbright, along with my colleague Rob Klepper, I'm Ken Stout. Thanks for watching the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. We'll see you next time in the dirt.